Hello, and welcome to part two in the module on patterns and frameworks for synchronous event handling, connection establishment, and service initialization. In the previous part of this module, we described the acceptor connector patterns and explained how these patterns can be used effectively in the context of our web server. We're now going to talk about a way to implement these patterns, starting with the reactor pattern. And to do this, we'll describe the way in which the adaptive communication environment, or ACE, implements a framework that embodies the patterns we just talked about. There, of course, are many other ways to implement the pattern for Reactor. We're just going to focus on one to give you a more detailed understanding of how this could work in practice. So let's motivate why we need this in the first place. This is a little bit of a recap, but it provides the foundation for what we're about to talk about. Historically, when people have developed event-driven applications, they program them directly to the native operating system mechanisms. Uh, this is particularly true if you're doing systems programming. If you're doing applications programming these days, you're probably using higher level frameworks and toolkits. But if you're building systems code, then you're usually using sockets or select or other kinds of event demultiplexing mechanisms. Unfortunately, when you program like this, it tends to tightly couple a lot of parts together, which means whenever any changes are made, you have to spend a lot of time going through the code, performing surgery, rerunning regression tests, having to open up your source control system, usually finding all kinds of mistakes over time, shaking out those error legs throughout a long, protracted quality assurance cycle. As another consequence is that developers spend way too much time rewriting this, this low-level infrastructure code. And believe me, it's very tedious and error-prone. I've written way too much of this code in my own life. And uh, once I learned the magic of patterns and frameworks, I resolved to help other people not have to rewrite this again from scratch. The good news is a lot of this code is very generic. If you spend some time to refactor it, if you spend some time thinking through the various implications of design constructs, structures, canonical behavior, flow control, and so on, you can abstract a lot of this out and turn it into a framework. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. So the ACE reactor framework provides a set of classes that allow event-driven applications to react to events from a range of different sources of events different kinds of I.O. events, sockets, files, terminals, local interprocess communication, and so on, time-based events, signals, anything that is event-oriented, you can typically connect together in a common interface through a framework that we use for the reactor. Applications typically inherit from something called ACE Event Handler, which is a base class. And they override the hook methods of this base class. And then they fill in various service or application specific processing behavior that can leverage the reusable infrastructure for eventing. These classes, of course, are designed in accordance with the reactor pattern. Here are some of the key classes that the ACE reactor framework provides. We'll talk about them one at a time. It provides something called ACE time value, which is a class that normalizes time and lets you do various kinds of relational and arithmetic operations on time values. So you can compare them and add them and subtract them in a clean and portable way. It also provides something called the ACE timer queue, which is a base class for a whole family of different timer queue management mechanisms, various things using timer wheels and timer heaps and timer lists and so on in order to be able to dispatch timeout handlers very conveniently and efficiently. There's also, of course, the ACE event handler, which is the core for being able to be called back when various kinds of things happen, either time-based events, signal-based events, or I.O.-based events. And finally, we have the ACE reactor, which is essentially the facade. It's the interface. It usually uses the bridge pattern to provide an abstraction in order to make it possible to register event handlers, remove event handlers, run the event loop, uh, start timers, stop timers, all kinds of other different types of things that you might want to do here. If you take a look at this paper, it gives you some more information about the, the ACE reactor framework and how it implements the particular pattern we've been describing. One of the things you'll see is that the heart of the reactor framework is this concept of object-oriented event handling. So let's talk a little bit about why you would want to do this. If you take a look back in the early part of event-driven frameworks and event-driven communication, things like the X Windows toolkit, those were typically implemented in C, not in C++ or Java or some object-oriented language. And as a result, when callbacks occurred, they typically called back on functions and those functions were typically associated somehow with some type of data. And this data would either be global data or it would be passed in as a pointer to a, to a structure or some kind of other relational database 
information that is associated with the function callback. And by doing this, it's just a little crufty. It's a little error prone. The connection between the functions and the data is a little bit diffuse and it's somewhat hard to understand. In contrast with the reactive-based approach we're talking about here, we can more cohesively associate the data and the functions that operate on that data through the use of an object-oriented event demultiplexing interface. So what we'll have is an event handler base class that you can subclass, and then you can have your state associated in the subclass, and then the various methods that you override can access that state. And it's all much more cohesive and localized and easier to understand, easier to maintain. Let's take a look at the ACE event handler class just to give you a feel for how this works. Keep in mind that, that other implementations of the reactor pattern will do slightly different things. There's their Java implementations, their implementations in other environments as well. The core idea here is to provide hook methods for each of the different types of events that may occur. As you can see in this diagram, we've got input events, things like incoming connections or incoming data. We have output events, which are typically used for learning when a connection has no longer been flow controlled and now you can go ahead and send without blocking. We have exception events which typically deal with things like out of band data delivery. We have timeouts, we have signals, we have other kinds of things as well. So those are the main hook methods that you would subclass and override depending on the kind of thing you're dealing with. This particular approach also centralizes how event handlers are cleaned up when they're no longer going to be needed. We have a handle close method that you will fill in to delete the object or shut down any resources it allocated dynamically when it closes down. The event handler also contains a pointer to the reactor it's associated with. And that makes it easier for an event handler to figure out how to remove itself, how to update its event registration masks that we'll talk about shortly, and basically keep charge of its life cycle by knowing the reactor it's associated with. It's kind of a parent pointer, if you will. Another nice thing you can do because we use classes with virtual methods is it's easy, as I mentioned before, to associate state with the, the hook methods. So here we have an example we'll talk about later, which is our HTTP event handler that inherits from ACE event handler. And it has some state. It has this connected socket that it's using to receive data from a client. And it overrides methods like handle input to figure out how to process the incoming data associated with that stream. And it's all nice and compact compact and encapsulated and part of the same abstraction. So if you look at this from a commonality and variability point of view, the ACE event handler allows us to have a common interface that is open to extensibility for the different kinds of events you might want to handle. I should mention very briefly, by the way, that these events that the event handler deals with are fairly coarse grain systemsy kinds of events, input events, output events, signals, timeouts. In a real application, you typically have more domain-specific events. Uh, thinking about Android, for example, you have a whole slew of lifecycle events for on-create, on-destroy, on-start, on-stop. And usually you would take the reactor as a core piece and then build, in a layered manner, more fine-grained type of event management on top of the core reactor framework. Let's talk a little bit about some of the types of events and event handler hook methods. When an application registers an event handler with a reactor, it has to indicate the type or types of events it wants to be notified about. Here's a simple example we'll talk about later. When an HTTP event handler is created and initialized, it turns around and says, reactor, please register me, this, to be notified when read events occur using a read mask. A read event would correspond to the arrival of a GET request from a client. There's a whole slew of different kinds of event types that can be handled by the reactor. There's read events, there's accept events, there's connect events, there's output events called write events, exception events, and so on. We're going to be focusing primarily on read events and, exception of, and, and accept events, not exception events, accept events in our examples here. And I'll show you as we go through this how these are applied. They're basically provided by a bit mask, and you can OR the bit mask fields together in order to be able to register for multiple different types of events. And that allows one event handler to handle many different kinds of things if you choose to use that particular approach. There's also return values that the hook methods will give back to the reactor framework after they finish processing whatever it is they're doing when an event shows up. Uh, for example, here's the handle input method that gets called back on the HTTP event handler. We'll look at this in more detail later, but what it's essentially doing is it's extracting the URI from the incoming stream and then it goes ahead and memory maps 
a file that corresponds to the content designated by that URI, and then it transmits that file back to the, to the client. When it's done, it returns various values, and it indicates whether it succeeded or failed. So we would give back certain values to say if this worked or if it didn't work. Here are the different values that get passed back. So we have the zero value, which means everything worked fine, keep me registered, I'd like some more callbacks in the future when my handles become ready again, please. If you give back a minus one, it says something went wrong or I'm done, please call my handle close hook method and shut me down. And if you give back a greater than one, that indicates that please redispatch me again after you've handled all the other various sources of input in this particular pass. The key point here is that when things get shut down, the reactor knows how to call the handle close hook method on an event handler, and that can be used to clean itself up, often by deleting this, as we'll see later on. Let's now talk a little bit about the ACE reactor class itself. This is the, the public interface, the abstraction that you will interact with as a user of this framework. It does a couple of things. It centralizes event loop processing. It has, has a method called run event loop. It also has another method called run reactor event loop, used for a slightly different purpose. And so when you want to run the event loops, those are the methods you call. It also has some kind of way of waiting for activity to occur by using low-level I.O. multiplexers like select or poll or other mechanisms. And these are used then as part of the demultiplexing process to figure out what's happened and which event handlers to call back. The event handler callback process is done by the reactor when the underlying multiplexer returns. And it basically takes a look and sees what happens, correlates that to the handlers registered for those types of events. And then it goes ahead and dispatches their hook methods, the appropriate ones based on what events occurred. And these hook methods, of course, are then the things that do application or service-specific processing logic in order to carry out the work designated and associated with those types of events. From a variability and commonality point of view, the reactor provides a common interface for being able to do several different types of variability. Of course, it can handle different kinds of event handlers by subclassing from event handlers, we talked about before, and it can also shield the rest of the application from the details of the low-level synchronous I.O. multiplexers and event demultiplexing logic. So you can plug in different mechanisms, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. There's a number of different implementations of the ACE reactor framework that come bundled with ACE. ACE uses the bridge pattern in order to be able to separate interface from implementation, and there's over a dozen different reactors for all different flavors of event loops, user interface toolkits, and so on. Some of the core types of of reactor implementations that are most commonly used are the following. The ACE select reactor, which uses select, and it allows one thread, of, uh, one thread to take its time to dispatch event handlers that come back from, from uh, events that select will dictate and indicate have arrived. It's got something called the ACE thread pool reactor, or TP reactor, and that implements something called the leader followers pattern, which we'll talk about later, and that actually allows a pool of threads to take turns accessing the underlying select mechanism. We'll talk more about that pattern in a little bit later part of the course. It's also got an implementation called the ACE WUFMO reactor for wait for multiple objects reactor. And that uses a very interesting system call that's provided by, by Windows that allows you to wait for things to happen on an array of handles. And it, it allows you to wait for many different types of events on Windows, not just sockets. You can wait for various kinds of synchronization events. You can wait for various kinds of threading, user interfaces, uh, files, overlapped I.O., and so on and so forth. And then the last one we'll talk about just briefly here is the ACE dev poll reactor, which uses a couple of specialized various mechanisms that Solaris and Linux implement using dev poll and dev epoll, respectively, which are designed to be more scalable than select when you have large numbers of clients connected. So to summarize this particular section, the ACE reactor framework is designed to simplify the development of event-driven apps. And the way, one way it does this is by encapsulating the low-level I.O. multiplexing and synchronous event demultiplexing logic within the framework so it's shielded from you. You don't have to worry about how to write that code, maintain that code, optimize that code. There's all kinds of clever optimizations that are baked in to the implementation of the ACE reactor. And then it also facilitates greater reuse. Of course, there's more reuse 
of the infrastructure for event management, but there's also going to be more reuse of the components you develop that live on top of this. And we'll see more examples of this as we look at more sophisticated examples of the patterns and the frameworks that we're going to be talking about shortly. Uh, one of the other key things we do is we separate out the mechanisms of the infrastructure for event handling from the various policies and protocols and algorithms that are implemented on top by the subclasses that derive from the ACE event handler.